Well, thankfully, the Sorting Hat has returned to Pottermore, but lots of people have been disappointed. The new Sorting Hat seems to be assigning people to different houses than they got before. Identity crises aside, there's good reason to want the old Sorting Hat back. It seems to be related to personality constructs that psychologists have been studying for decades. As we've explained previously, there's some critical things you want in a good measure of personality. Room for variation in responses? not just either or categories, questions that people answer consistently over time, and the answers to those questions should be able to predict some kind of behavior or outcome about the person. Oh, right, and the traits you're measuring should make some sense. Now, the sorting hat doesn't meet all these criteria. You can only be in one house, and the recent news about the sorting hat's return has thrown off the second criteria. But on this third criteria, the sorting hat actually does pretty well, at least compared to your average internet quiz. To face the challenge of testing the validity of the sorting hat, researchers compared it to other well-studied personality traits. In particular, they wanted to see if the sorting hat was related to another test of personality called the Big Five, or the more boringly titled five-factor model of personality. Those five factors are openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. This model of personality tends to do really well on these criteria. You can get a percentage score on each, and it's fairly consistent over time, even up to several years. To choose these five factors, researchers used a statistical tool called factor analysis, which basically just means they group together the questions that were most closely related and separate out those that weren't. This means they get to avoid mixing traits together that should be separate, which you'll recall is a problem with some other personality tests. And we've been finding other things that can predict for decades. Here are just a few of them. You can predict taste in music. Extroverted people tend to like upbeat pop a little more. Those who are more open to experience tend to like jazz and classical music a little more. And conscientiousness seems to be negatively correlated with a taste for rock music and heavy metal. You can also predict things about the musical experience in general. More agreeable people tend to have stronger emotional reactions to all kinds of music. You can predict what people's offices or dorm rooms will look like. Invite a stranger into an office or dorm, and then ask them to take this personality assessment for the person who lives or works there. And the stranger can take cues from the organization of desks, lighting levels, and other decorations to get a surprisingly accurate personality profile. You can predict some aspects of physical appearance. One study found that extroverts are more likely to have their clothes judged as more stylish. If you score high on openness to experience, you're more likely to have tattoos and piercings and other body modifications. And finally, you can predict how people represent themselves on social media. One famous study designed an algorithm to see which Facebook likes are most closely associated with these personality traits, and they found a lot of surprising trends. Extroverted people are more likely to click like on dancing and Chris Tucker, whereas introverts are more likely to click like on Terry Pratchett and fanfiction.net. The highly conscientious are more likely to like accounting and less likely to like Wes Anderson. Extreme agreeableness was associated with some religious likes, like Christianity and the Book of Mormon. Those low on agreeableness tend to click like on Friedrich Nietzsche and um, I hate everyone. Unrelated to personality, they also found that intelligence was related to liking Morgan Freeman's voice and curly fries. The algorithm was also designed to predict people's personality traits from those clicked likes, and it did better than the user's friends and family did. So the Big Five does about as well as you can expect on these criteria. But how about the sorting hat? The researchers answered this question by testing whether people sorted into each house scored higher on specific Big Five personality traits than the average of the other three. They recruited fans who had already taken the Pottermore sorting hat quiz. They found that Hufflepuffs were more agreeable than average, and Gryffindors were slightly more extroverted than average. Slytherins were higher than average of the other houses in narcissism and Machiavellianism. Best way to measure narcissism, by the way, is just to ask people if they're a narcissist. Turns out narcissists are happy to say so. Ravenclaws, as expected, were higher than average on a measure called need for cognition, which isn't quite intelligence, but is more like how much you like to use your intelligence. Need for cognition is often related to the personality trait of conscientiousness, and the researchers found that relationship, but they didn't report whether Ravenclaws were higher than average on conscientiousness or not. I blame the peer reviewers. Finally, the researchers tested for all these relationships again, but instead of using the sorting hat results, they they asked the participants which house they wanted to be sorted into. Using the house they wanted rather than the house they got, most of these effects got bigger. People's preference for their house was a better predictor of their personality than the actual house they got. Now, there are some limitations to these conclusions. First of all, this only demonstrates what's called the convergent validity of the sorting hat. This means they didn't check whether the sorting hat can predict behavior, they only checked whether it predicts 
other measures that have been shown to predict behavior. This is less effective because correlations aren't transitive. Just because A correlates with B and B correlates with C doesn't mean that C will correlate with A. A could even negatively correlate with C. Also remember that the sorting hat is categorical. You can't be partially in one house and partially in another. This makes it harder to find relationships between your house and any other outcome. But this also means that the idea of being a Ravenclaw or a Hufflepuff might be more meaningful than these results suggest. If the tests were tweaked slightly to give percentages as results, you'd probably find stronger relationships with the validated measures of personality. But it's also interesting to note that people's desire house was more closely related to their assessed personality traits than the results of the sorting hat. So if the sorting hat, the old or the new one, gave you a different result than you wanted, it might mean that you're better at knowing where you belong than this quiz is. And we'll talk more about that sense of identity that drives that choice in a future episode. See you then, and thanks for watching. Those low on agreeableness tend to click like on Friedrich and the... <laughs>